Hi everyone, I'm Sandra and today on MapMugger we are covering the first part of the Vector Scratch course. In today's video, I'm going to provide an overview summary of the properties of the scalar products, which is also known as the dot products, and the vector products, which is also known as the cross products. The main objective of today's video is to structure all the information in a way that is hopefully easier to remember. The dot product is defined as a dot b equals mod a mod b cosine theta, and the cross product is defined as a cross b equals mod a mod b sine theta n cap. If this line represents the vector a, and this line represents the vector b, in each of these equations, a and b refer to the vectors themselves, and mod a and mod b refer to the magnitudes of vectors a and b respectively. Geometrically, mod a is the length of this line and mod b is the length of this line. The theta here refers to the angle between the two vectors a and b. Both the dot product and the cross product start with mod a mod b, but the dot product is cosine theta while the cross product sine theta. The dot product gives you a value, a number. The dot product of two vectors, for example a dot b, gives you a number for example 0, and you might use this definition in this form quite often. However, the cross product looks quite different. There is this n cap here, which is the unit vector normal to both a and b. Normal is another word for perpendicular. When you cross two vectors a and b, the result is another vector which is normal to both a and b. In this diagram, if a and b are in the plane of your screen, the direction of the cross products will be in the direction of an arrow that is shooting directly into the screen or out of the screen. This means that, for example, if you know two vectors a and b that lie on a plane, and you want to find a vector that is normal to the plane, you can do it by taking the cross products of a and b. The n cap represents the direction, whereas mod a mod b sine theta represents the magnitude of this resultant vector. So, mod of a cross b equals mod a mod b sine theta. We will rarely actually use this full equation. More often, we will use this one. Which means that if your vector product gives 0, example, a cross b equals 0, this is not the number 0. It is the 0 vector. And printed on paper, it is indicated by bolding the 0 here compared to the unbolded number 0 here. But when you write it, you indicate it by drawing the tilde, the wavy line underneath. Just be careful of that. Now let's go through the properties of the dot product and cross product. The dot product is commutative, which means that a dot b equals b dot a. So for example, if we have a dot b plus b dot a, it is equal to 2a dot b. However, the cross product is not commutative. a cross b does not equal to b cross a. Instead, a cross b equals to negative of b cross a. So for example, if I have a cross b minus b cross a, it is not equal to the zero vector. Instead, it is equal to a cross b plus a cross b, which is then equal to 2 times a cross b. Next, both the dot product and cross products are distributive over addition. So a dot bracket b plus minus c is equal to a dot b plus minus a dot c. And a cross b plus minus c equals a cross b plus minus a cross c. For both the dot products and cross products, scalar multiplication is also associative, which means that lambda times a dot b equals to lambda a dot b equals to a dot lambda b for any real number lambda. And lambda times a cross b equals to lambda a cross b equals to a cross lambda b. What happens when you're dealing with vectors that are parallel to each other or perpendicular to each other? If two vectors a and b are perpendicular, it means that the angle between them is 90 degrees. And so cosine theta is 0. And looking at this equation, if cosine theta is 0, it means that a dot b equals 0 when a is perpendicular to b. This is a very important property. Every time you have a question where you're dealing with two perpendicular vectors, you can use a dot b equals 0 to help you in solving the question. And you need to be flexible enough to also see that, for example, 
if a dot b minus c equals 0, it means that either a is perpendicular to b minus c, or a is the 0 vector, or b minus c equals the 0 vector, which means b equals c. On the other hand, when two vectors are parallel, it means that the angle theta between them is 0 degrees, which will mean that sine theta equals 0. So, if a is parallel to b, then a cross b equals the 0 vector, or mod a cross b equals the number 0. And you also need to be able to flip it around and see that if a cross b minus c equals the 0 vector, it means that either a is parallel to b minus c, or a equals the 0 vector, or b minus c equals the 0 vector, which will mean that b equals c. What happens when you take the dot product of a vector with itself, or the cross product of a vector with itself? The angle theta between a vector and itself is 0 degrees. So if you take a dot a, cosine of 0 degrees equals to 1. So a dot a equals to mod a, mod a, times 1, which is just mod a square. Conversely, if you need to express the magnitude of any vector in terms of a dot product, mod a equals to the square root of a dot a. These are potentially useful for solving proof questions involving vector algebra. And if you take a cross a, a is parallel to itself. So a cross a is equal to the zero vector, or mod of a cross a equals to the number zero. That's all for today's video on the properties of the dot products and cross products. I hope that this has been a useful consolidation of the properties that you need to know. Look out for future videos in the Vectors Crash Course series on other related concepts. All the best for your school exams or A-levels or just life in general. Feel free to leave any questions or suggestions in the comments.